play. Fifteen love. Fifteen on. Camilla Georgie's famous father. Very famous. There. She's very good, and you know, this is why I think she can win a major. Every year when I see Pagula, 15, she 30. has improved a part of her game. Mm. She didn't used to come forward, she didn't used to play drop shots, and every year she adds something to her game, and I do think that the most important thing in a tennis player's arsenal is how willing are they to improve, and how willing are they to experiment with their game. WTA Championships last year in 15, and in doubles. That had not happened since Lindsay Davenport in 1994. So this is going to be my, I have a lot of questions for you. I can see. Who has benefited more from the Coco Golf partnership with Pagula? Pagula or Coco? Take your time. You can do it in the next game. They're not constant doubles players, but they sure have played an awful lot and they've been very successful. I do think it's Jess, and uh, the reason I say that is what is always mind-boggling to me is when people call her, she's so solid, she doesn't really have a weapon. When Jess came on tour and she was 18 years old, she was known as a ball basher. She was the Camilla Georgie <laughs> of the millennial <laughs> generation, if you know that. what I So, And I think people forget that. And the reason she's playing so solid and so consistently is because she worked on her game and she was, she was able to improve her fitness, to improve her way of extending rallies, staying in rallies, staying Jessica, point Nagu by Nagu point, uh, keeping her focus and concentration up. And it's so funny to me that people always call her, oh, she's, she's just solid, she has no weapons. She lost a couple of years to I mean, major injuries, 15 hip months. surgery, you know, the kind of thing where her mom, who it sounds like, it sounds like Kim Pagula is slowly, she had cardiac arrest that has been very, very scary, and, and Jessica wrote so well about it. Her mom said to her, you know, you don't have to keep playing. We got some dough. Family's billionaires. But it says an awful lot about Pagula that she wanted to get back to here. Well, I do, th I do have to say both of them have an incredible mentality. Yeah. They are such competitors. They are so level-headed, and that's really one of the most important aspects for a tennis player. And both of them have that, and I think they've just been 
a positive influence. And you cannot forget, when you have a few losses, to have those wins and doubles makes a huge difference. Oh. Thirty fifteen. I also have to think, I mean, they're both top players in singles. I just have it in my head that doubles can relax top players. I mean, we certainly saw the Williams sisters do it about 20 years. You know what I mean? Oh! A lot of smiling on doubles courts. And this is where she has to be really careful. Thirty. Oh. That second serve into Georgie's backhand. Georgie has one of the best backhands on tour. Can really direct it in any direction. Hits it so, so hard. It's Kim Pagula, David Witt in the white cap there in the corner. Oh, man. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you a lot of questions. I don't. There's, uh, he's he's there's David Witt. And Pagula has so much praise for him, especially, he says, because the guy's funny. The guy keeps things loose, keeps keeps things light. Juice. Great hitting Advantage, for a first round match. Normally in the first round match, these big hitters still are trying to find their range. But these women out here seem to be feeling very good about their games. She had a look at that one, but Pagula holds. Does Georgie change tactics at Pagula all? Leads two games what to am I missing? It seems to me she just wants to see a ball and hit. Yeah, that's true, although I do have to give her credit. The year she won Montreal, she had worked on giving her forehand a bit more shape, and I do think that gave her uh, an interesting natural change of rhythm in her game because she hits the backhand so hard, the forehand obviously too, but it would just jump out of your strike zone a bit more than the backhand, and it was really complicated playing her. 15 how many times have you played her? I have played her many times. How'd, how'd you do? Uh, I think we're at five all maybe, or four all. We have a very even head-to-head. -head. Fifteen. Fifteen. And she needs her first serve too, because all of her game is built around that first serve. Whenever she's playing well, she feels her serve well. She's hitting her spots, and then she can dominate right away after the first shot in the rally. And that was the difference in the matches you played against her? The quality of her serve? Yeah, I would say so. Thank 
14, 15. I'm watching the left knee of Camilla Georgie. She retired in the last tournament with an injury there. She's actually, you look her up, you start looking up retirements. There's a whole bunch of them from her. Sometimes she's walked on the court with something. Sometimes it happens in a match. It's an explosive game. They just looks very good from the baseline, very solid, very, seems like she's hit a lot of balls in training. Maybe the yes. early exit in Cincinnati did her some good after winning Montreal. You can just see sometimes when a player has hit a lot of balls in training. You can, you can see that? Because I can't. You can see that. I can. You can. <laughs> what, what is it you see? And she just, no hesitation. She's hitting the ball. She's hitting through the ball. Normally in the first round, everyone is trying to make the balls. Advantage, George. Sakari, the eighth seed, lost right away yesterday. Jeez. Third time in a major, in the Grand Slams, is, she's lost right away. Could you see in her eyes that something's missing? Can you always tell when a, when a player needs to take a break, needs to get away? Well, with her, I could see that she was scared to play the match. And when fear takes over, it's really hard to play through it, no matter how many balls you have there. could just see her think that's why I, uh, mean, I, I can Georgia. see that Jess is feeling good about her game because she doesn't seem to be thinking about how she's hitting the ball and with Sakari yesterday it just seemed like she was thinking through every shot and in tennis you play the best when your subconscious mind takes over when you just let things go you work on things in practice but then you let it go in the match and you, it just has to be automized It's interesting, Juice. right? You mentioned the injuries of Camilla Georgie. It's with uh, similar to these racehorses that ha are so full of muscles and so um, so able in their performance. When they have a little bit of an issue with their body, they can't race at all anymore. Camilla's game is such a high octane game that when something is off in uh, the body, she just doesn't see the ball as well or can't move up to the ball as quickly. It can really have her game fall apart because she does take so much risks and she doesn't have that much margin to her game. So she needs to be picture perfect in everything. Wow, that's a great comparison. But first of George. Goes on. All right. Opening couple of games is second round match. A good little lead two games to one. First Medvedev. We heard, we heard that an awful lot because the games, one of those games went 25 minutes. Do you think they should be allowed to just move around? I mean, should you wait 25 minutes oh. for one game and be outside, you know, with, a, with your beer warming up, your hot dog getting cold? 
I do think that, 15 uh, especially on the big courts, they should be allowed to walk in and out whenever they want. And eventually the players will get That's used the thing. To it. The players can get used to that. Exactly. Oh. It's actually, by the time Novak Djokovic started his first round match last night, it had emptied out quite a bit. That's when you can really see fans moving around. And this right there is what Jess does so well. She moves up so quickly into the Did baseline she when she has a short ball. So not only does she have to hit the ball hard, she just takes time away from you by her positioning in the court, how quickly she moves up to it. Full chill off. Forty fifteen. Google leads three games to one website and get all kinds of stuff. Highlights, real time stats, the draw updates, all that good stuff. It's on usopen.org. Fifteen. Oh. You can see her marry sometimes on the first serve. She places her right foot too frontal and opens up her entire body. That's when she sometimes runs into trouble, and she never does that on the second serve. So her second serve sometimes is trickier to return than the first one. You can see right here how she opens the entire body. And you just see how Jess had it in her racket. She missed it, but she had it really nice and cleanly in her racket. The second really jumps on you. It's very hard to return and take early. Okay, I'm Georgia. Love hold from Camilla Georgia. Pagula leads three games to two. Backhand First down set. the line. Pagula, three two. Fifteen. She goes bold. She does. But you see right here what she did there? There was a little bit more shape on the ball, and that's when Jess can get short. 
or can miss a ball here and there. I think that's something she could look for to do today, Camilla. Not quite as dramatic, but Pagula takes it out of the air. 15 on. Thirty fifteen. How do you explain that Georgia has lost more first round first round Grand Slam matches in New York than anywhere else? She's five and six in this town. This friendly old town. Yeah, that's a, that is an interesting stat. Be that it is later in the year and what we talked about earlier she relies on her explosivity and her body and physicality so much that maybe just the tiredness of the whole season maybe that's hurting her <laughs> and there it was right again yeah. that bit of bit more of a shape 40 30 got the depth got it out of the strike zone of Jess interesting to see that she has made some adjustments and that's what's good sometimes when you have a bad head-to-head -head. it forces you to make adjustments you can't go in with the game same game plan if you've lost eight times before That's what he does. Juice. He? <laughs> he just kind of whirls around a little. Does it mean again, please? Yeah. Just, just keep this coming. Boy, that's pretty. Advantage, Pegu. Wait, please. in a hurry isn't it and that's much Juice. better time she's still trying to find the right position where to return just just a second serve a few times she kind of let it jump too high but this one was perfectly timed oh. on this side she's still looking for it on the do side Advantage, Begul. Game, Begul. Begul leads four games, 2-2, two -two, first set. See this, I want to take it in a different direction. The difference between getting consistently to the quarters and getting consistently to the semis, something she's still looking to do. I mean, do you feel that much different as a quarterfinalist and a semifinalist that there's only four of you left in the locker room? I mean, is that why I mean, oh. you, you know you're four sets away from becoming a Grand Slam champion? You're still you're, you're deep into the, the tournament, but 
you still got a way to go. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. got to be a different vibe. Well, I was on the semis, and I was a bunch of times in the quarters. And I do have to say, the um, the switch from quarters to semis yeah. is proportional, which means uh, sorry, exponential, not proportional. So exponential. So the attention and the pressure rises by four times as much all of the sudden, rather than from one round to the Is next. That right? Yeah. And it's all of it. Yeah, I was uh, in the first eight seed, but in the 15. lower seed, so eight or nine. And I, you can get to the quarterfinals without having a press conference in the main that's, once. That's so right. And then all of a sudden, you're in the semis. It's only four of you left. And there is 100% going to be the main room press conference. I'm not saying that is the difference, but all these little details do make a difference. And combined, they can be, they can be altering. Sloane Stevens' loss in the opening round yesterday 15, in the 2017 30. champ. Man, I was thinking of going to the press conference, but it was in like press conference room three or two, and I, I, I didn't want to be, I, just because I like her so much, I didn't want to be among the fistful of people who were going to be there, you know what I mean? Tough stuff. And she played a great match yesterday against Hadad Maya. Really good performance from both players yesterday. Tough first round draw. Yeah. 15, 40. You both play opening set that Jessica Pagula wanted. Pagula leads five games to two for the set. The WTA Championships of Saudi Arabia. Pagula finished by saying, I think if the money was right and the arrangement was something we can get behind, where 15 we can go and create change then I'd be okay playing there. She said, but we'll see. And it sounds like this stuff is getting talked about even as we speak. They're all factors that it depends on for me. We'll just have to see how it works out. Your best guess? They're right. taking Saudi money? I think they will, just from feeling and no, no facts. But it is an interesting point. Sure. Team, if you uh, think about Billie Jean King playing Bobby Riggs, now everyone sees it at this uh, as this milestone in women's sports. But she basically was in a lose-lose-lose situation, if you think about it. If she lost, she lost to a 55-year-old. If she didn't right. play, she was a coward. And when she won, there were plenty of people saying, well, she beat just some gambler who was 55. What did she actually do? It's just now, 45, 50 years later, that people see it in a different light. So women's sports is hard to win. In First set, we go. 34 Six minutes to two. for Jessica Pagula to take this first set.
Love 15. And um, everyone knows you got you got a big brain pan with a lot of brain cells to rub together. So we want to know what people like you think. There's there are some players in this draw. Frankly, I I'm not sure they even have an opinion. Fifteen on. It will be interesting to see if Georgie. I think she made a few good adjustments in the first set with her forehand, putting a bit more rotation on it, a bit more height over the net. Will she do that in the second set? Will she be able to pull it off? Now we're dealing with the famous Arthur Ashe court shadow goes across the court. About 235 on this Tuesday afternoon in Queens, New York. Thirty up. Thirty forty. And Jess is number three on the WTA tour and winning percentage after the second serve of her opponent. So I think Camilla is feeling that going for a bit more. playing were you involved in the analytics and the stats the way you have to be Jeez. now sitting in a booth um i was always an analyst i would always analyze my opponents before matches but i would rely on my own <laughs> brain power i would just watch uh, videos maybe glance at a few stats but when i started playing the, the stats were not as available as they are yes so i, I was my own stat machine now. <laughs> Against one ace, that's Georgie's fourth double. And smart positioning, trying to get it into Pagula's body. You can just see the the stress Jess puts on her. She's just going for that much more on her second serve. Yes. work with one of my favorite ever tennis players uh, advantage for many years, the great Fred Stolle. My name is Andrea. <laughs> and Fred, numbers were really coming in. We, we kept, we started throwing up a lot of stats boards and ah, more bloody numbers. You know. Fred, if you were up here these days, you'd have what we call in New York a conniption. Look at this, double falls or aces. Yes. It really doesn't have much to do with this game. Yeah, it's, uh, it's about being able to read them and read them well. I have a favorite story about Pete Sampras, who always used to 
pass his opponents in Wimbledon cross court, except on set and break points, he would go down the line. Wow, that's a good one. So if you would look at the stat, you would see 90% passing cross court and you would have to tell your player as a coach hey close that cross court down yeah. but you would get passed every time on a big, big point mm. that's really nice beautiful it just shows the doubles she has played advantage she feels so comfortable up there Closes the net nicely, approaches it quickly to close the room visually for the opponent where she can pass. Really important in the net play. She could have even taken a few more steps for my taste, but not that I was a great volley player, so who am I to? <laughs> You're just going to have to weigh in on everything now. You get used to it. <laughs> and you knew, you knew your way around there. And again, Mary, that shape, that forehand with the rotation, that's the only time she can extract Juice. an unforced error of Pagula's racket. Is that true with any of Pagula's opponents? They know to do that? Well, Get they it up should, high they, around her ears on They the should know that, yeah, they should know that. The problem with that is you have to play it fast, right? It can sit up because she has such good timing. She will take it on the rise. Advantage, Georgia. How does she beat Iga Sviantek? She's done that a couple of times now. What bothers Iga about this woman's game? Well, I do think that players who tend to beat Sviantek have really good backhand down the lines because she leaves that side open to play forehand out of the backhand side. Game, Georgia. Took a while, but Georgia held on to start this second set. First game, second set. That's interesting. So yeah. That's yeah, very important hold here for Camilla Georgi. But yeah, I do think, because if you think about it, Rybakina has a great backhand down the line. Jess Pagula has a great backhand down the line. And if you think about Iga's game, she always hugs the backhand side because she her best shot is the forehand that sits up when she can run around it and hit it from the center or slightly on the backhand side of the court. When she has to run to the forehand or when you can rush her to the yeah. forehand or play really flat, that's when she seems to have problems. And I do think both Pagula and Rybakina have that really flat backhand down the line that goes straight into that quote unquote weakness. It's not really a weakness, but compared, to all, yeah. exactly, <laughs> compared to all the other strengths Iga has, Let's that's pursue. the one spot where you can sometimes get her. And I think that's also the reason she hasn't quite found her game on grass yet, because the ball does tend to stay flatter there. Oh. That's when she can't quite get under the ball with that forehand grip. Love 15. said you liked the look in Pagula's eyes. Love to like the look in Iga's eyes coming in to defend this title? I do, I do. I do think she will she works with her team to peak at the Grand Slams at the majors. And I do think that most of the top players do that now. You saw it with Carlos Alcaraz and in Toronto. With Novak. 15, 30. I think Iga is now part of that of that um, of that group that wants to dominate the tour and win as many Grand Slams as possible.
and this right there is the reason why I do think that Pagula can win a Grand Slam. She had two second serves. She saw that Camilla has now found the range where to hit it, has found the position uh, when she has it in her strike zone, and right away she makes two first serves. And this ability to adjust, to constantly adapt. There's another. There's another one. Is what makes her so strong, and I think that's something why people underestimate her, or why people underestimate somebody like Novak Djokovic. He had to win more slams than any other living person for people to respect him. Finally, be like, ah, oh, he's pretty good, that guy. <laughs> One game all second set. What's interesting is you know, Pagula's the number one American man or woman at this year's US Open. But she again, I like listening to her speak too. And she said that as much you know, she's getting more attention than she normally gets. But she says a lot of Americans are getting attention here at this Open. And she's right, of course. Men and women. There's a lot of hype around a lot of the Americans, she says. Fifteen. And I think that's another benefit you asked earlier, the benefit of Jess and Coco Goff playing doubles together. I, I strongly, strongly believe in healthy rivalries. I think that's what makes our sport, especially tennis, because it is an individual sport. And I think just having somebody that's a friend yes. breathe down your neck is the most invaluable thing you can have. It's better than any motivational 15 speaker, on. even an American motivational speaker. It's better than... <laughs> It's better than someone you don't like breathing down your neck? I do think so, because you ha you are more open to learning from from them as well, yeah. rather than just being anti, opposed to whatever they are doing. And that is such a beauty. I love her back and down the line so much, because it's 30, so simple. 15. There is no huge backswing. She just times it really well and moves her whole body through the shot. She leads two games to one, second set. What did they use in the gym after this point? Well, they, for example, were the first long. ones I saw lifting weights before matches to have a bit of tonus on the muscles. I had never seen that before. Granted, I came on, on tour when they were already around for yeah. a while, but still, I hadn't seen anybody else do that. And now it's fairly normal to see. Just for the people at home, don't go running and lift the heaviest Dirty weights level. before you yeah. go out on court. It's more to put a bit of tone on the muscle. It's just small weights, but a few uh, lunges, a few squats, a few push-ups, these kind of things, just to have that little bit of extra on your muscle. 14. Wow. Really found her serve in the second set here. Jess has. Please. 
Game Pagula. It's an easy hole for Pagula. When you watch videos of Igor Shvantec doing two games the old, goals, the second set, it's dazzling. Yeah, it's dazzling. How quick, how tight, you know, how small those steps are, how specific they are. And you see it in her. And you game. see those yeah. tight turns on exactly. the board. Exactly. She does that so well. You can never drop a ball short into the court. She just is all over it and so quickly into the court. And, and just smoothly. She like swoops yes. into the ball, doesn't yeah. she? She wants to break open this set right here, doesn't she, Pagoon? Just heard a come on from her after that second one. Some nice tennis in this second set, aren't they? Really are. I'm very impressed with this, with the quality of this, uh, of this first round encounter. As I said, people who hit very hard to have high risks in their games usually need a few matches to to find their rhythm. But these, both of these women, are playing well. And just in the first set was. It's something. Brought Camilla a lot of dough on her account. <laughs> that's what. That's the shot that's made her the most money. I do think so. It's really so hard to to do anything with it. Oh. She's made over six million dollars in career prize money. Who has made over 10 million and almost 4 million this season alone? Yeah. Well, right now, it's really Jeez. a game of winning ground. Whichever player finds their way into the baseline and can take time away from the other usually comes out on top of these rallies.
incredibly fast and deep. Advantage, Georgia. Just wow. And what a way to finish it yeah. in cold blood. <laughs> Advantage, Pegu. Fifth double. And after all this hard work, she was down love 30 in this game. Mm -hmm. I do think technically she opens up a bit too much, loses on her rotation. She's nearly frontal towards the court. This is Magnus Lundgren. Yeah. Say these balls make for much better tennis. Here he is again. The camera person loves him. <laughs> Watch the game, bro. If you remember last year, players, women were complaining about having trouble controlling the ball. It was much yeah. lighter. Now you can see they are very comfortable hitting the ball. It goes where you want it to go. Oh. Advantage for Google. Advantage, Jordan. into its tenth minute. Um, I like how Georgie does that. Walks it back a little bit right before a really big point. Gathers herself up. of the match. Wow. Juice. I wonder which foot it is. If it You've been is talking the, about her feet. Yeah. 
but I, I'm not sure if she really reached that far over with her right foot or if she just moved her left. She's going to take another break. Here. All right, tell me what you see. Oh, oh, but you didn't. You wouldn't call that a footfall? The heel. It was the heel of her. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting means I don't agree. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, what is interesting? Because <laughs> I, I, I've done a lot of work over the years with Lindsay Davenport, and if something happens that's weird like that, or if I say something ridiculous, she'll say, fascinating. <laughs> that's the tell. <laughs> fascinating. is turning into Jeez. a golf Siegemund here. Yes, exactly that. The first game of the second set went more than 25 minutes. And it really, to my mind, and I said it last night, the winner of this game is going to win the match. I think I might have gotten a fascinating from Lindsay off of that one, too. <laughs> Advantage, Georgia. It's really like whoever wins more ground wins the point. She showed me those a couple of times. Yeah, you will see many players taking those balls as a drive volley. Yeah. But Camilla feels more comfortable smashing that ball. When it's done, it's done. <laughs> when it's hit, it stays hit. Exactly. It's quite a differential.
defensive shot from Camilla Georgie just did a great job in opening up the court. Juice. That thing was tailing away from yeah, her, wasn't it? Yeah. I think she didn't expect it to be as fast and move through the court as fast, although she did have it. She had a clean strike at it. That was a good job by Georgie, though. This is a tremendous game by both. Yeah. where she gets her at times when she manages to hit that advantage hardly hit ball through the middle when Camilla can't move out of the way in time on the forehand side on the backhand she's really good and just dipping low and redirecting but on the forehand side she tends to go out of the shot and she got a few unforced errors here just with that shot maybe a return to look for Okay, wow. <laughs> That was some battle over one game. But Pagula. Pagula leads three games to two. Up a second set. set. Break. One set to love. Yes, sir. Fifteen on. Thirty fifteen. Has 100% on her first serve. 40, 15. <laughs> Came in Pegula. That is a some stat. <laughs> Six aces. Well, if she serves like this. Oh. 88% for the match.
game. Thank you. Wow, after that long break game, an easy hold. A couple of games. Thank you, Lily. Leads four games to two. Round Second two. Set. The number three seed, top American man or woman. She's proud of that, that part. Yeah. Man <laughs> or woman. <laughs> or man. <laughs> Love 15. Beautiful hands here. This was a tough volley. She got nice and low and kept her body still very important. Fifteen on. Fifteen thirty. That is the problem with the top players or as the opponent of top players when they get that foot ahead and they swing even more freely it's really hard there's you find your way back in serving for this match. Pegula leads five games to two, second set, and one set to loss. By the way, 35-year-old Laura Sigmund off to Coco Golf on this court last night. She was crying in her press conference. She thought that the fans were unfair to her, that she's not a cheater. Really hurt by what people perceived as slimy tactics. Some match from a 35 year old. Multi love. And very quickly, Jesse Pagula gets herself to match points. Lights. First up. For you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're only in day two. Give me a chance to screw that up big time. 